<laughs> yeah, Echo's just hanging out. Just waiting. Waiting its time. And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Echo Victor. Let's go ahead and try another Echo list out playing Sharima and PNZ to get a little bit extra predi prediction in here. But we're going to play it control style with Victor, where Victor is going to be at the top end, also being able to be a very big threat with all the hex core upgrades, get a whole lot of keywords, you know, do all the fun stuff that Victor can do. Uh, so we're going to combine these two together. We're also going to have Siphoning Strike, because that's just kind of a personal favorite card of mine. Uh, again, granting your um, allied champions everywhere, plus two, plus two, very fun. So we're going to have a couple of those. Um, then we got some good interaction. Um, Practical Perfectionist, a card that I've been impressed with. I only played it, I think, just the one time with Echo so far, but it looked pretty good. I think the best target for it is going to be, like, the Time Trick, um, you know, if you can get extra copies of those. But, you know, creating... Creating whatever we do for extra copies is going to be good for Victor, right? Because Victor wants the created cards. And of course, when you have your leveled up Victor, your created cards are costing one less. So whatever you make with the Perfectionist could cost one less. You could have like one mana time tricks, for example, or one mana Preservariums or, or whatever there. So that could be cool. Um, let's see. I don't have a ton of predict overall, though. A lot of like whenever I was building the deck and cutting it down, a lot of the predict cards did get cut. So we're kind of looking at Chronomancer, Time Trick, and Practical Perfectionist. And so like that's why the Perfectionist hitting like Time Trick could be very important as far as getting more Predict cards for Echo. I just don't really want to play um, some of the other ones, you know, like Ancient Preparations, just getting that generic 2-2, especially later in the game, just not very impactful. So ended up cutting the rest because, you know, you always want Ballistic Bot with your Victor, right? That's another way to make very, very cheap Creative cards to help level up your Victor. And I love Hourglass with Victor, being able to say Victor, because um, that's the thing. You know, like you put a whole bunch of like keywords on your Victor, and then they kill your Victor, and you're like, oh man, that's sad. So you really want the Hourglasses to protect it, like that quite a bit. Fallen Felines, the great one drop these days with the Predict cards, and then it's just kind of removal and card advantage, and that's the, the rest of the deck. All right, so let's get to it. I think this should be pretty fun. Let's go ahead and play some Echo Victor. Here we go. Oh, you can see you can see both doggos. That's Harvey, the black doggo. That's Puppy, the yellow, I guess, doggo. All right, playing against some LeBlanc. This has got to be a Yeti deck or Legion Marauders, but probably Yetis. I don't see anything to mulligan from the opener. Already got a couple of predict cards. Hopefully they don't have like round three. Gosh, I just gotta do this. Okay, so obviously this is a bad trade, but I think I gotta do it. I'm not killing the Yeti Yearling any other way. What I'm really worried about is them playing another Yeti Yearling and then having um, two Yetis in play and then putting the eight mana Yeti into play for free. I'm very worried about that. Humanity is obsolete. Evolve or die. And so they put two Enraged Yetis into their deck randomly. Hopefully they're at the bottom of the deck. There's a lot of cards. Uh, between now and then, hopefully. Lots of options. System upgrade. Okay, so this is my plan. My plan is Ignition, get this to two power, next round play Echo, and attack with both, and Echo Strikes, we create the Fleeting Time Trick in hand, we have the two mana for the Fleeting Time Trick. We have drawn basically all of our card advantage, right? Three of our six just card advantage cards. I don't, I don't know if it's a Mystic Shot meta. There are obviously cards that, you know, Mystic Shot is very good against, but there's also a lot of decks that just, like, ignore Mystic Shot, including the deck that I always lose to 
the thralls. They just don't care about Mystic Shot whatsoever. New tech, new tricks, new day, new zone. That's a lot of new things. Ah, they got one. Okay, just a Yeti Yearling. So obvious. What? Frostbite? Troll Chant. Wow, they are not worried about... They were not worried about a Mystic Shot right there. Alright, well I'm just going to save it though. Could let it, you know, strike and get the, the uh, time trick, but I'll just save it. I could put more Echoes in the deck. That's not a bad idea ever, I don't think. Or I could get more Merciless Hunters in the deck. I guess more Echoes, so Echo Champion spell is this thing, which is not bad. Parallel Convergence. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna get more Echoes, I guess. Machine's bright, super cool. Your idea, Kay? But glad you like it. Let's go with the... Alright, so... First, where are we at? Okay, that's... This is going to be number two for Echo, so we're not that close to leveling up Echo. I don't think we need... Another, we don't have to choose another time trick. I already have, like, a lot of, like, two mana. Just get more cards in our hand, and plus these are all two mana draw cards, so... Don't need any of those. Um, I think it's either between Ballistic Bot, Quicksand, or Skip. And I think Quicksand is probably the safe way to go. Like, with these um, cards that are going to be attacking us and everything. I'm going to just take a Quicksand... Putting Echo back into the deck, and also like this Parallel Convergence is a really good card. We can put one of these into the deck also. I'm happy with that. Victor! My boy! Okay, so we've Join me if you want to live. four out of seven for Victor. Oh, they did have that. Three, eight, three, five, five. Okay, gotta block one of these. Block one of these. This is ten. Ugh. Make it six. I'm gonna go to six. So many two mana draw more cards. Oh man, double whisper words. Those were their last two cards were double whisper words. Yuck. Alright, we want elusive and scout. Oh no! They drew a bloody business. Well, so much for that. Man, they're high rolling. Yeah, sure, why not? Just get more free five fives. That's. I, uh, I guess that sounds good. Completely reasonable to me. Still need elusive. I think that's the best plan. With utmost efficiency. Yes, of course. And a decor upgrade. 
No, I don't believe Yetis is a top deck. Not after us playing Yetis yesterday and losing all of our games. I don't want to beat whatever woke you up. Obviously, any deck's gonna win games, and yes, they you know like they they have the cards, they won the game. But no, Yetis is not a top deck. All right, we got a really Azir. All right, Ballistic Pop Victor, usually very good against a lot of things. I don't know if it's great against a really Azir. It's a little slow, but I think I'll keep it. I like seeing no one drop. Witness perfection, meat bags. Can you improve perfection? Do I want more mystic shots? I think so. I hope they don't have a Zier. Against Aurelia, Mystic Shots are very good. Alright, so not playing Victor next round. With, uh, you know, like playing that card right there and then making the, the Ballistic Bot a 2-3 and attacking with it. And Huffle Yoda. Together we are part of something hello, hello. more. Together, you are children of Shurima. Yeah, nothing wrong with five mystic shots in the deck. So yeah, I just had to assume that that's what they were gonna have. They're gonna have a bounce spell. Uh, for the Azir, so at least they don't get to do the Flawless Duet now. They don't have the mana for that. So that's the good news. Having one health things against Aurelia Azir. Especially against against hand soldiers. You get fearsome. Fearsome is the absolute worst thing to hit, isn't it? I mean I guess I can attack with fearsome. Not that that matters too much. Three mana, four six champions, not bad. Not too bad. Azir's command. We play for the people and sing for the land. Field musician. Normally I would choose Time Trick. 
But I could see getting even more Mystic Shots in here. Yeah, it's hard to have the time to time trick. I think that I think it's Mystic Shot. Well, guess I did that. Hi, we are so smart. But you need that. Greater things await. I don't have any one mana removal. I think the yeah I don't know why they attacked with Azir. I guess the the best reason to attack with attack Azir is to um and no I don't care about the one two anyway I think the best reason to attack with Azir is like you're planning on just bouncing it anyway so I, I feel like that's what their plan is is just to like recall the Azir. Force their hand at interaction, and then I'll have the mystic shot afterwards. I think they got me though. <clears throat> I think they got me. Too many shape stones and good interaction stuff like that. I think, I think they got me. Give me grace enough to mask my doubts. The four twos didn't look too good in this matchup, right? Like we're just gonna block very much with the four twos. with Echo Victor. Disappointing game there. Yeah, the Zero is still great. I did take his I did take Mystic Shot the one time where maybe if I take the Aftershock we're able to Man, Echo just two health against Avalanche. I just kinda hate it. Maybe if I would would have taken the aftershock, I would have killed like that that landmark that put in a million sand soldiers. That was probably a decision that was incorrect by me. So whenever we did the um, deck tech at the very beginning of the video, I I didn't have aftershock in it there. 
but after the first game, realized that we, we just need Aftershock these days, because otherwise we don't have much of a chance against um, a deck like this that my opponent's playing. And so we have we have three Aftershocks in here, took out the Thermogenic Beam and took out the two Gotchas, because these Thralls are just... Um, it's just a really popular deck right now, and it's a really good deck, and without Aftershock, we don't have much of a chance. So you want to be able to get Promising Future out of their hand if you can. I can, I can go aggro and Mystic Shot the 2-2 and attack for 2. But... I don't really mind if this Ballistic Bot dies to whatever. That's fine. Join the glorious evolution. The flashbacks will bow, break maker. Yeah, Siphoning Strike's definitely greedy in our deck. Definitely, it's a favorite of mine. Uh, but yeah, it's it's on the greedy side for sure. That was the only card that punished me for waiting. They just have Promising Future or the 4-5 were okay, but you know, obviously like with the Promising Future you want to wait, but Talia... Talia was the card that punished me for waiting. Don't have Shape Stone, just let this happen. Come on! How? How does this deck... This deck's just unbeatable. Like, whatever... Oh, man. I just... Whatever's the worst-case scenario just always happens against this deck for me. I just have a Shape Stone? Uh, yes, Promising Future is the reason to wait on Aftershock. The human mind takes time. I guess my plan is Aftershock and probably Mystic Shot the, you know, just go Aftershock, Mystic Shot, Mystic Shot the Talia. This may backfire, not keeping these two up, but getting more keywords and closer to victor level up is really appealing. Yep, it backfired. Victor has life steal, so I can try to make up for that. I don't want Victor to die to a shape stone. For obvious reasons. Rely 
rely on you to keep us safe. Wish that was time trick right there. So obviously they're, they're holding up frostbite cards, right? Like that's obviously what's going on here. They have troll chant also. So they have troll chant and shapestone. I know I had, had that aftershock on top that I wanted, so it's like I could have spent two mana on Preservarium, but I'm going to save the spell mana for the time trick. So if they have a way to save Talia, I lose the game? No, these do one to my Nexus, right? No, they do two to the Nexus? So I just lose the game. So I guess I have to Blanc. Yeah, having Shapestone and Tro Troll Chant, both of those two cards were devastating. Especially the Shapestone. The Shapestone in particular was... Incredibly devastating. Just another one. Oh, man. What a wonderful life opponent lives. They still haven't even had to use any Frostbite cards. So, I mean, they might as well just also have Frostbite cards with everything else they've had. You know, might as well. I think about taking the champion and having, you know, like, Mer Merciless Hunter give vulnerable to, like, Talia and have my champion challenge Talia, try to create another time trick. Are they going to have a frost? I mean, if they have a frostbite spell, I lose. I guess maybe we can't even play around a frostbite spell. I mean, we lose to everything. We don't just lose to harsh winds. We lose to everything. I 
I guess I can do this. I guess this is the play. Yeah, I guess this is the play. It harsh winds? I have never seen harsh winds in this deck ever before. Like actual harsh winds? So I can't even siphoning strike? I've literally never seen harsh winds in this in that deck before. We're just seeing all these cards. I never see Shapestone or Troll Chant or Heart. Like, what? What are all these cards? And then, yeah, now you have the Avalanche that kills this. I, I guess they just have, like... I guess they get to just, like, look at their collection and just, like, what's, like, the best card to have, and they just have that. I guess that's the... That's the thing about this deck, is you get to just do that. What is this nonsense? The thing is, I don't know how I'm stopping this Frost Guard Thrall from killing me. Now. Well, if I Hourglass Victor, it comes back Frostbitten anyway. Well, so, like, Victor still would add zero power. I'm getting both the Hexite Crystals in my deck before playing a Time Trick. We're going to be looking for Aftershock. You gotta imagine that it's Ice Shard right here, because that's the the best card to have. So, gotta imagine that they have that card for how our luck's been today. Wow, no Ice Shard, at least not yet. We are currently playing Echo Victor for our deck. If you're asking what our opponent's deck is, um, not ex you know, like they're they're playing a bunch of th looks like thralls and yetis. Looks like we got thralls and yetis. Um, yeah, Trusty Neil says you don't run Lissandra or Trundle in yetis. Let's well, see. That's um, when you're early in a format like this, you shouldn't close your mind off to, like, what, you know, possibilities, you know, like, you shouldn't think, okay, well, if they're playing Lissandra Trundle, they're not playing Yetis because you can't play those together, because, because you can, you, you don't know what, you know, random people do random things, right, and that's, and that's good, and I, it's good to, like, I'm, I'm glad that my opponent is, you know, doing something different, I think that that is a good thing, but don't, when, when you're playing against stuff, 
don't close your mind off of of anything keep keep your imagination open of like what they what you could be playing against this one's a fighter Challenger Victor. These echoes have been kind of tough against you know we're just playing against a lot of Freljord decks. An echo, unless it's leveled up, is is kind of rough against Freljord. That which has made and obviously the Freljord with all the the flash freeze and everything's made siphoning strike worse also. So right, so like our. The power that our, our deck has between Echo and Siphoning Strike has not looked good in all these games against Freljord. So imagine that, that card's the Enraged Yeti. Forget they're not attacking. That would have been a really tough challenge for me to do because of Frostbite cards anyway. Like, that was... They they made my life a lot easier by playing that card. By just even playing it in general. Like, if they would have just passed with all that mana, I would have had a lot... I would have had a lot more difficult decision. Does that mean that they have... Because of Frostbite, does that... Does that mean they have another one? of iron. I like doing this right now because the Siphoning Strike is safe. The Aftershock will be safe yet later still, but I like that being safe. I could regret playing this and not having the spell mana. I kind of regret playing that Preservarium and not having the spell mana because I think I wanted to upgrade Ignition, Echo, Aftershock, do all of those this round. <laughs> yeah, Echo's just hanging out, just waiting, just waiting its time. Love having the spell shield on here, so I don't have to be worried about frostbite. Oh, 
And in case they do something, I got the Mystic Shot to respawn. And there we go. Okay, one and three. A vision of progress brought to life. Twisted Fizz. Be interesting to see how this does. I wonder, like they probably got Make It Rain in here. Probably not Black Market Merchant. Um, Quicksand's honestly good against Fizz. I kind of like. I think we'll keep a Quicksand. I don't know. I don't know if I want both of them because it's still three mana. Okay. Pass. No. Oh. Life that papers now faces. I am the future. Ballistic Bot helps out a lot of cards that they have going on over there. I am... Uh, I, I definitely am worried about Ballistic Bot on their side more so than, like, getting our Ballistic Bot set up. Because it just helps, it helps like, get them a lot of spells for Fizz. It's great for Rummage. Um, it, it honestly does a lot. Okay. Kyrian Sumpworker. Not what I was expecting. And of course it's doing like that nexus damage and turn and helping out their clock and everything too, so Ballistic Bot is a wonderful card for their deck. Good point, Storm Event says it's possible they're not playing three rummages right now, but I don't know, which was Yeah, they, they probably are. But I guess it's it is possible. They're not. All right, let's turn these into two threes. Can I possibly siphoning strike this round? Probably not. Take a Merciless Hunter. Okay, no, get excited to save that thing. Sand, just getting some damage in on this Twisted Fate, plus we got them to use a suit up. My the Hexite Crystal could be amazing in this matchup. Talking about a card that has a lot of potential, Hexite Crystal. We're gonna have a great open attack here. Open attacking for 12, kind of forcing their hand. Man, maybe I just get more things out though. I could play like another Fallen Fe like you know, play Fallen Feline, play Perfectionist. Yeah, I kind of don't like if they're usually because usually like they're at the, the point of the game like where they're playing like elusives and stuff anyway. I kind of don't mind those things blocking. Shuffle. 
Yeah, like I don't mind that thing blocking. No Hexite Crystal. Okay. I think I'm going to take this Chronomancer and just try again for the Hexite Crystals. Shoveled more chronomancers though. That's our that's alright. They're just taking that? Yeah, they can't take that. <laughs> they can't take eight damage. I have two of those ignitions in hand. Okay, okay. Came back and finished a reasonable two and three. Especially with having that Preservarium in my hand, I, I didn't mind shuffling more of those uh, Chronomancers into the deck. So I think our deck was close. It felt a little off. Like the, the Echoes and the Siphoning Strikes, those are the two cards that underperformed um, expectations. Um, I'm very glad that we had all the Aftershocks. There's just so many of the Thrall decks running around right now. I guess I guess that's the thing we got to start doing with our um, decks is just putting in a lot of Landmark removal, um, unfortunately. But that's what we got to do. Um, a couple of those, like those first couple, you know, like two of those first three losses definitely felt like they could have or should have been wins. Opponents seemed to have kind of exactly all the cards they could, like they they needed. We, it felt really unlucky to be the the first O and three. I could have definitely seen this deck going uh, three, two, four, one, uh, fairly easily. But yeah, the the echoes and the siphoning strikes felt off. Um, from just what we were playing against, right? Like, we are playing against a bunch of Freljor. They were playing a whole lot of Avalanches and just being able to do two damage really easily. Um, and that's that's not what you want to be facing at all with Echo. Would this have been better if it was, like, Zillion or Ezreal, maybe? You know, instead of Echo, maybe? You know, like, because, yeah, like, the, the Echoes just didn't perform well. Um, you know, Sivir, another option. You know, Zillion, Ezreal, Sivir, those probably all could have done done better than echo but the thing is is like in, in other matchups like where it's not just so inconsequential to do two damage everything you know not your frail your matchups echo could have done a lot more but you know trying trying different echo decks that's what we were trying here today um but i think there's i think there's a lot of potential with this and i think victor um can uh you know like okay we played zillion echo before and even uh, Echo Vi before, but you know, like we we struggled against the larger units with those decks, and I think that Victor can kind of help out a lot against larger units because it's a really good blocker if you can siphoning strike, you know, with with it with like having a lot of power, you know, you can save with the hourglass. I think I think Victor can kind of clear up a lot of holes that this deck has. However, Victor is very weak against two things. There's two things that are just perfect against Victor. One, Hush. There's not really hush decks in the metagame right now, so that's great. That's great for Victor. Um, I guess there's technically three things that are good against Victor, but really the two. I was gonna say because then also I guess um, like bounce removal, with like Will of Ionia, that kind of stuff. That that's good against Victor, but there's not very many people playing that either. And we have answers to that with the Hourglass. Like that's just the same as like Vengeance or anything. So that's fine because we have Hourglass. But the the two things that Hourglass doesn't really help against is Hush 1 and then Frostbite 2. Those are the two things. And I guess there is a lot of Frostbite right now because there's a lot of Thralls with Frostbite. And all that Frostbite stuff is kind of bad for Victor, and that's also bad for Siphoning Strike, right? Like Siphoning Strike also very difficult to pull off against Frostbite. So these two things are... These two cards are weak against Frostbite, and unfortunately the same decks that are playing Frostbite are also playing like your Avalanches and cards that are good against Echo. So Echo doesn't help against the the one like the one strategy that's like the Victor Siphoning Strike is bad against is also like Echo is also bad against. So that's that's not great uh there. But yeah, so maybe you need to go like Sivir there, like where Sivir is not as bad against um Frostbite and everything. But you know, I want to you know like the whole the point of this deck though is to try out another Echo deck. But I think there's a lot of potential here and I think that playing three aftershocks is the way to go and um everything like that and i think victor siphoning strike has a lot of potential against a lot of other decks in the metagame 
All right, but that's going to be it here for Echo Victor. And yeah, that's the thing is if, if we can level up Echo, leveled up Echo can do just a bunch of great stuff, right? Like Chrono Break, getting more created cards um, and everything like that. And, and obviously, like you're creating these fleeting zero cost time tricks. Each time it strikes, you're creating the time tricks. Like Echo with Victor can do a lot of stuff. The, the problem is, is like Echo and Victor and Siphoning Strike are all weak to the Frostbite cards. And those are very, they're very popular right now. So kind of kind of have to work around that. All right, but anyway, that's going to be it here for Echo Victor. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button and feel free to leave those comments. Um, you know, let me know what you think of the deck and everything like that. What what your champion combination you like with these two regions is. But that's going to be it here for this one. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.